Hi, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Folks, this is a very special Mac Voices because I am at Drobo. I'm at Drobo headquarters with Jeff Barrell of Drobo. We're going to talk a little bit about a new Drobo model that they have out and anything else I can get out of it. Jeff, it's great to have you. Thanks for being here. <laughs> it's good to see you, Chuck. I should say thank you for having me because this is a very big treat for me to, uh, to actually be on location with someone whose products I like so much. You're welcome to be here anytime. Thank you. Thank you. So let's get right to it. Um, we have a new Drobo coming out. That's right. Yes, it's, the, it's our third generation of the original Drobo product, uh, about eight years since the launch of the very first Drobo. So we're very excited to be updating this product and bringing it to market. You mean I've had a Drobo for eight years? I can't believe that. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Well, I've had a few Drobos for, <laughs> for, for eight years. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it, it's one of those things that it promised to be good at first, and it's always been good. And I've, I tell everyone, I have never lost a block of data with using a Drobo. I've lost it with other things, but never with my Drobos. So I'm really excited that maybe this Drobo will put the Drobo advantage and all the Drobo power into some other people's hands. Well, thanks. Yeah, we hope so. So, you know, when we brought the first Drobo to market, the key goal was to have a product that could expand with people over time. And anybody, regardless of technical ability um, or interest in technology, could have storage that would be safe and grow with them. And one of the commitments we made back on that, uh, when we launched that original product, was that you could keep it over time. You'd be able to move the drives forward. And so I'm really excited that this new product, even though it's eight years on, you can take the drives out of your first generation uh, Drobo and move them into the new third generation Drobo and just carry on going. Take advantage of the increases in technology and performance, but without the need to actually do a migration of your data, just move the drives. And that is exciting when you think about eight years, what the changes we've seen in eight years, and the ability to use something that I used eight years ago and upgrade it with all the new advantages. Uh, it, I mean, it's no small feat, and I congratulate you for it. Well, thanks very much. It, it, it certainly requires work to make sure you can do that, but, um, but in all the Drobo families, you're able to port forward within that family. So, uh, so with this, uh, you know, our, our standard Drobo model, you'll be able to migrate from the first or the second generation Drobos just to this one, just by moving the drives. So, so what are the new characteristics of like, the characteristics of the new Drobo? I mean, obviously it's newer, better, faster, more modern. But what else do we have? Well, I think that's in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all the time we have, folks. <laughs> but no, it's uh, exactly what you said. We've uh, completely modernized the architecture. So all of the modernization that you see in the, uh, the 5N and 5D desktop products uh, move down into this uh, the standard Drobo now. Um, so a much faster processor architecture, um, a, a, a dramatically enhanced data protection architecture, including things like battery backup, which you don't see in any products of this class. Um, also, uh, the product now uses USB 3, uh, which is the uh, obviously the most high-speed interface that you'll find cross-platform these days. Mm -hmm. um, and so between the, the process and the memory, uh, you know, the new architecture, the improvements in the software and the USB 3, this product, worst case, is three times better. But in most, the average performance would be closer to five times better performance. So it's a much faster Drobo mm -hmm. um, for folks to use and deploy, you know, very modern Drobo. So that's the core. Uh, in addition, we're also adding uh, better support for Time Machine. One of the requests we get a lot uh, here at Drobo is better Time Machine support. People have their multi-bay Drobo connected to their computer. In a lot of cases, they have a second single drive to, to do the Time Machine backup separate, principally because Time Machine will expand and consume all of the storage available to it on the drive you select, right. and you can't, you can't segment that or limit that. So with the new uh, Drobo, you'll be able to just say that you want to have a time machine volume, specify the size, and it'll, it'll pop up a second virtual drive that you can use for your time machine and keep that you know, side by side with your, uh, with your other data on your Drobo. That's huge because that can expand, I assume, as the time machine backup needs to expand, or is it a set, is it a set um for lack of a better term, partition? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, initially, we'll be having a specified size, um, but our technology is certainly able to expand. So we expect that that volume will be able to expand over time. Okay. And what size drives will the new Drobo support? Uh, any drive that you can buy. So all the way up to the new six gigabyte drives. 
of a, oh, it's a new six gigabyte drive. Yes, a terabyte, sorry, six terabytes. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm doing it. Yeah. I went right there with you. Yeah, the six terabytes. So, yes. so that's four times six, that's 24. That's a lot. Yes. <laughs> it's a lot of storage. Yeah, it is. So, Does this one have a single or dual drive redundancy? Because I know that's another big thing. Uh, you'll be able to specify either with the product. Okay. So so I can, I mean, that's, that's exciting to me because that means that even if I have one drive fail, if I wish to have the extra level of backup, and that wasn't available, I don't think, on the original drivers, was it? No, this is, a, you know, we, we continue to migrate features across the different families of devices. So. And so this is a four bay Drobo, USB 3, enhanced time machine support. Mm -hmm. What am I missing? Faster architecture, much enhanced data protection with battery and so forth. Yeah, yeah and I don't want to overlook that, you know, but I just you sort of take it as a given. But, you know, we're, <laughs> we're into a new Drobo. Okay, so how much is this one going to cost me to add to my family, my Drobo family? So with the, with the new uh, uh, Drobo, we're hitting a completely new price level for the company. Uh, it'll, its MSRP will be just under $350, and we'll actually be offering a, 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 a loyalty discount for existing Drobo customers so that they can upgrade, which will be in the order of about $50. So it'll be you know, a great time for you to you know, bring that older Drobo forward to the new technology. Wow, so let's see that and the, the is that for that's for any drobo or that's just for gen one and or gen two? Yeah, to upgrade your, your to, existing to, drobo okay. up to this new product. So if I have one of the original USB drobos or one of the USB and firewire drobos, now I can come up to this one which is USB three for about three hundred dollars. That's right. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's a completely new price point for us. Yeah, that is. I mean that's exciting because that puts it easily within reach of a household that is even as we speak, is generating more video, more photos. You know, I mean, forget the spreadsheets and word processing. You know, they're doing all the other stuff, and that's the stuff that's chewing up their storage. Absolutely. You know, every, these days, absolutely everybody needs to be able to protect their, their digital assets. We all have some part of our lives that's, that's digital only, and so we want to make it something that's affordable and within reach of just about anybody. That's great, Jeff. Drobo seems to have had a resurgence in the last few months, maybe a little longer since you've been back, it feels like there's there's been a refocus. Is that a, is that a fair assessment? Yeah, well, yes, it is. Um, uh, you know, we've always been very excited to deliver uh, storage to, uh, to everybody, make it totally accessible. So if you need to grow storage, manage storage, historically, that was something that was very complicated to do. And what we've tried to do is remove all of the complexity so just about anybody can manage storage. Um, it could be at home. Um, but it also can be in a lot of professional environments. Uh, a lot of creative artists and creative professionals rely on Drobo because they just don't want to worry about technology, but it's an intrinsic part of what, what they do these days. All the media is digital. Yeah. So that's important. Uh, we do actually have a, a very um, uh, fast-growing business component to the, uh, to the company as well. Um, and we're seeing Drobo actually get pulled into data centers more and more. But one of the things we've been very focused on uh, over the last uh, best part of a year now um, is ensuring that you know we stay true to our original customers and our original mission, which is just making a, a product that anybody can use and is accessible to everybody. And that is, I think, one of the keys to the Drobo. As we were talking before the interview, that I don't know why anybody would buy another device simply because this device, you, it can grow with you or you can grow with it, depending on your point of view. You know, if, if I buy a two terabyte, four terabyte drive, uh, I've got a two to four terabyte drive, and that's all I've got. And if I need another one, then I've got to go and buy another one. And with the Drobo, I can just swap out drives or add another drive, get my storage, have my protection, have not had to invest in another, another uh, power supply, another case, not taking up more space on my desk. I mean, it just seems such a perfect solution. I know it may feel like it's a little more expensive to start, but you got to you got to play that long game. I'm not going to disagree with anything <laughs> you said. <laughs> I'm really glad to hear you say it. Um, uh, you know, there are other multi-bay products you can buy, but uh, but they all require uh, you know a fairly significant understanding of storage and RAID levels and volumes and things to operate. Um, and you need to connect to the management interface to make things happen. With Drobo, 
you know, the key value is exactly the same as it was originally, which is you can just push a, a you know, a bare metal disc straight into the unit, and within just about five seconds, it's added and your storage is expanded, and you don't have to do anything else. You have to use software or anything. You just put it in and it's done. If a drive fails at any point, the drive will just get on with self-protecting and, you know, try and make the data redundant again on the remaining disk you have left. So if you go on a vacation for two weeks and a drive fails when you're gone, it'll get itself right back into a safe condition without you having to do anything. So, um, so you know, that those core values in the product are exactly the same today as they were when we originally launched it. That's, I mean, it's, it's fantastic that the company has been able to maintain that or come back to that. And this new new Drobo just kind of proves that that you've you've maintained the key functions. You're low, able to lower the price point to make it more accessible to more people. Why wouldn't you buy anything else? I I, I got to agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, nobody should have uh, any doubt at all that we're we're investing very solidly in the Drobo line of products and. Um, uh, you know, we're spending a lot of time and attention making these products better and better. Mm. Now, this is sort of the part of the road to MacWorld series because it will go out before MacWorld. You all will be in it, at, on the show floor at MacWorld showing off the new Drobo as well as the rest of the Drobo family. That's right. Yes, uh, we've been uh, we've been attending MacWorld uh, for many years, almost since, uh, if not since, we, we launched the first Drobo product. So... Uh, we love Macworld. Um, our user base is predominantly Macintosh. Um, uh, it's just over sixty percent of our user base. Um, so you know, we love to be there. We love to get feedback from the users and meet people, and just hear you know hear their Drobo stories. We've had some phenomenal stories over the years. Um, uh, so it's really great to get out there and, and meet folks. I'll, I'll be down there, and I'll be looking forward to meeting my customers. And you and I get to have another conversation, I believe, uh, Thursday at 5 o'clock, um, maybe a broader discussion about storage and, and what else is going on with the company. But, you know, that we'll get to do in front of a live audience. So maybe we can take a couple questions and tell a couple of those stories. I'm looking forward to that. Jeff, at this point, should I bring up the transporter thing? Should I bring up the fact that you are also – running Transporter, and that also will be at the show? Sure, happy to talk about okay, it. Okay, then <laughs> Transporter will be at the show, and Jeff will be there, too. Um, yes. Yeah, that's that's another great product, and it's it's a different kind of storage product, and it intrigues me that you're, you're approaching storage in so many different ways that are so useful. Yeah, um, uh, storage, you know, as I mentioned earlier, storage is an intrinsic part of our daily lives, and uh, and so it's, it's fun to be involved. Uh, the transporter products uh, solves a completely different need from uh, from the Drobo product. The transporter product is designed to provide uh, the user with a very similar experience that they would have with a traditional cloud service like Dropbox or Box or a similar service, um, but based around hardware devices that they own. And there have been devices uh, for you know, for many years that you could buy that would let you access your files from the road. Um, but oftentimes they've been sort of hard to use again. And so the, the first thing the transporter does is it drobalizes that. It makes it very simple for people to get access to the data from the road. and gives them that, that beautiful, um, you know, cloud synchronization access model that folks are used to these days. But then the second part of transporter and where the real value in the product gets, you know, unleashed is the fact that you can you can put them you can connect them together, and form you know reasonably large meshes out of them. So simplest case being you have two transporters and you have one offsite you know and you have one you know at home and they mirror each other and your data is being protected at another location. But you know groups of uh, colleagues or friends can get together and their transporters can exchange data, and uh, and they can share and collaborate. And the data is only ever kept on the transporters, so it's never moved into the cloud. So what it means is you can have much larger capacities than you could afford with cloud storage. And secondly, it's 100% private because the data only ever lives, you know, exactly where you want it to be. And nobody, not even us, has the visibility into that data or access to it. So it's a very, very private solution. It feels just like any other cloud service. You can access it remotely while you're traveling, on your laptop from the coffee shop or at home. But... Um, uh, but 100% private, so um, so the best of both worlds, and you know far more cost effective for large capacitors than any cloud storage you could buy. So it's a it's a it's a, a very new kind of thing, uh, but it's gone very well. Uh, 
whenever you launch something like that, you're you're never entirely sure uh, what will happen. But um, as we announced a few weeks ago, we already have uh, over 10 petabytes of user data. In fact, over 11 now, because uh, we've added another petabyte just in the last few weeks. But uh, over 11 petabytes of user data being managed on transporters, which is which is more than most of the cloud services other than the, the big two or three. So, uh, so you know, phenomenal first year for transporter. And again, it's, it's only been a year and you're at that level. And, and the other thing about the transporter I want to make sure we point out, you know, we just talked about the affordability of the, of the new Drobo. The transporter is equally, even perhaps more affordable. Even more affordable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. And instead of Ginsu knives. Um, no, it's, it's so uh, affordable that anybody can get into this. And with the new transporter, well, relatively new transporter sync, if I've got it, if I want to figure out how I'm going to use this and whether I like it, I can just plug in any old USB drive that I have sitting around, and now I've got a private cloud. Yeah, that's exactly that's right. A, $99 will buy you the transporter sync, um, and then you can just plug in any USB storage that you have and use that. So you can really start using transporter for a very low investment. And the $99 you would spend on sync certainly won't buy you very much cloud storage for very long. But with the sync, you can plug in, you know, four terabyte disk and just, you know, you'll have four terabytes of cloud storage right there and then. So, Jeff, I need more room in my office for Drobo and Transporter products. I, you do. <laughs> I do, yeah, I do. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for the time. I look forward to seeing you on Thursday at Macworld, and uh, hopefully we get to do this again sometime. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices at Drobo. We'll be at Macworld iWorld 2014. We hope to see you there. We hope you will get to see Jeff there. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, app.net, Google+, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter, the Mac Voices Dispatch, to stay up to date with all the latest Mac Voices news from our front page or at macvoices.com slash newsletter. Advertising and sponsorships handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Backbeat